Lonely Man's podcast sponsored by teespring.com slash Lonely Man's where you can get the new Lonely Man's merchandise. Yes, sir. You're rocking the fresh gear, bro. I'm out. I'm, I'm digging the Lonely Man's Lonely Man's gear. It's hot. I'm going to rock it everywhere. Hell yeah. Ben's got on the Caucasian colorway. I'm rocking the hoodie of color. <laughs> the hoodie, that color is pink, but it's still of color. I dig it. Let's, I think uh, let's do a freeze frame real quick ever because like this is a very low budget podcast when I promote it I just take a screenshot of the YouTube video so let's do let's get a, let's get a screenshot real quick uh screen pose we can still talk there in the screen pose technically right uh it, it's hard if you're like your mouth is moving it, it'll be awkward all right fine I'll stop right, pick a pick a pose all right good I'll scream <laughs> tomorrow morning. Nice. <laughs> Take a picture. Click, click. Take. A little behind the scenes look at how the Lonely Man's uh, promotional team, production team does it. Yeah, y'all are getting firsthand views of the quality of production that we put into this. That's... Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about how we don't have a personal page for the podcast. If you people don't want that i feel yeah do do people want to like that's the thing i guess maybe it's like if you wanted to go find like specific excerpts or clips or videos or something but we don't do that would we start doing that if we had a page um i guess i could do that yeah yeah i mean i guess if we had something that was particularly like a fire segment maybe maybe making notes of like when we have like a good riff or a good joke or something do i have a note card by me Maybe once we start getting like a guest or girls or host or whatever on here, yeah. then we could be like featured person of the week or whatever. And we could just like put up a little thing about them. Maybe mm. that's an idea. Yeah. Like uh, when you were walking the dog and no, when the dog escaped in Alaska and ran into someone's house, I rec- I screen recorded that and put that out as a clip. That was, that was prime <laughs> content right there. Yeah, that was happening live. The dog dipped. That dog was wild. Yeah. It, it was wild. I mean, it's Alaska. So you just, all right. You, you never know what could happen, bro. You just be walking in the woods and fucking bear. Yeah, it's the final frontier, dude. It's still, yeah, it's still there. It's already like the lakes are already frozen over and shit. It's winter is not coming in Alaska. It is there in Alaska already. Yeah, it just is winter. It's about year round it's like summer stops by but winter is there like consistently did you run into any wild animals when you were in alaska um i saw some moose yeah that's pretty some tight moose and some elk yeah, yeah moose were just kind of there we'd be driving and be like oh there's some i don't know what they call the the, the moose there's like a like males or bucks and there's a word for the female moose which, which i can't remember cows heifers i don't know <laughs> i think cow is an actual term for the female you might be you might be right i was just let's see female moose jamie look that up young jamie <laughs> <laughs> i'll be uh i'll be my own young jamie it's cool the weird thing about being like on a computer here is like uh yeah so a male moose is called a bull a mature bulls. female is called a cow bulls and cows dog yeah, bulls and cows, dog. And an immature moose is either of either sex as a calf, which is weird that we, they don't change the sex until it becomes an adult. Hmm. I think we as humans should adopt that. You're just a child until you become an adult, and then, then yeah. you can choose what your sex is. That might be a deterrent for pedophiles, too. So they're not just, there's no little boys, there's no little girls, there's just children. I mean, dang, that's a bold strategy. <laughs> <laughs> no idea if that would work. Yeah, I don't, I don't Let's know. Let's not talk about pedophiles. I don't want to be that comic. No, that's definitely not my strong point. I don't know anything about that stuff. So no. I'm, I'm going to leave that to you. Every open mic comic that is like, I'm going to crack the code on the perfect pedophile joke five months into comedy. <laughs> pedophile jokes are dangerous because they're, it, unless there's like a, they're very high risk, low reward plays. Yeah. You know, like it like one, even if you do the best pedophilia joke ever, there's going to be like 
75 percent of normal people who are like this is a pedophile joke and weird from the jump already i'm just tuning out yeah 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 that are already tuning it out so even if you like nail the joke and murder it there's going to be like comics and like a fourth of your audience that are going to laugh (laughs) like that's that's a high risk low reward play because if it bombs then everyone hates you and Mm -hmm. thinks you suck yeah which 90 percent of open micers and new comics and us but then it's just back to the to the drawing board for a new the, pedophilia joke baby the school. <laughs> yeah <laughs> there are like hacky taboos also that a lot of comic like like what rape jokes pedophile jokes uh I don't know. There's probably something else, but they're like, yeah, those are like the taboos, but like everyone tries to like master those like taboo, like find a new taboo. I don't know. Oh, oh abortion's another one too. Yeah. Well, that's because they're like shock jokes, right? They feel like if they can say ridiculous things, that's going to get a reaction. Yeah. But they're hacky, shocking things. You know what taboo is there like a taboo premise that you like to go to like, well, that you like to dri- dribble and that's taboo. Hmm. Trying to get a good uh, heroin reference in New England is hard. <laughs> You've tried, though. I've, I've heard quite a bit of them. You make a lot of references to the heroin. Yeah, I dropped... Uh, well, it has personally... I, I know a lot of people that have died and gone to jail and ruined their lives over opioids uh, as a life. What's worse? New England restaurant. Dying or going to jail? What is worse? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, what would you rather do? Spend Die or spend life in prison? probably die well that's what i'm saying what's worse it's close like yeah but i have seen shawshank so maybe i might try to spoon my way out i, I haven't seen it do they live good lives or they're they're able to you've escape? never seen shawshank no who are you <laughs> i'm disgusted take off this pot take off this sweater you're you're out here being a simp dog <laughs> but no do you ever you've never seen like a good prison movie though Jesse Burlingame never saw Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he knows the reference. Yeah. Oh, man. That's why when I, I I said a Shawshank line in my joke, and you were just like, yeah, yeah, real funny, fun. Yeah, yeah, I get it. <laughs> what, what line is that? About digging your way out. It was a shitty joke, so I don't want to talk about it. But still, <laughs> now that I know you haven't seen Shawshank, I don't feel like it was that bad. Maybe you just don't understand I, I haven't seen a lot of like uh, white people classic movies, though. Shawshank, oh, Jesus Universal, right? Yeah, that's pretty much a, like a that's an everybody movie. Have you seen a lot of like black popular films then, or what? You're just in there watching like Paid in Full. I've seen Paid in Full, <laughs> Good. probably like Boys ten times. Boys in the Hood. <laughs> I've actually never seen Boys in the Hood. I've seen Menace to Society like ten times. Have you seen uh, How to Be? how to be a player no i think i might have seen pieces of it on hbo oh man how about um i've seen booty call booty call <laughs> yeah who who was in booty who was in booty call i can't remember I can't. jamie fox and tommy davidson because they some comedian made booty booty call a thing with that movie that was like their go-to bit and that's where the movie name comes from yeah i was that um who was in who was in how to be a player? Why that's Bill that? Bellamy. I think that's Bill Bellamy. Was Booty Call one of his bits or is it Jamie Fox? It's maybe Jamie Foxx's bit. I thought it was Bill Bellamy's bit. Sounds more familiar. Yeah, isn't Booty Call? It's not a Def Jam movie, I don't think. Though it has Def Jam comics. Where is Tommy Davidson at? He was dope, dude. Tommy Davidson. Um RIP to Tommy Davidson, Tyler. No, he's yep. still alive. Actually, RIP DJ Screw today. DJ Sc- For how long? 20 years ago today. Really? In 2000? November 16, 2000. Overdosed on that drank. Huh. Overdosed on, on that lean, right? DJ Screw was on the lean. Yeah, opioids, bro. <laughs> That's why I'm wearing the pink hoodie right now. Repping yeah. the protein scissor. 1993 according to it was 1993 from a bill bellamy bit it was, okay yeah, wow i so. nailed that worcester's top urban comic baby <laughs> you know i probably i'm not gonna lie it's 
when it comes to urban old school hip hop, but your lack of movie watching is perturbing quite just every now and again. I'm just always like, what is it that Jesse watches all the time? Turns out to be random YouTube videos. A lot of YouTube. A lot of, a lot of YouTube podcast videos. I, I rewatched the Dave Chappelle special the other day. I'm not really watching too many new things or new old things. I do like watching Chappelle specials. Every time I watch a Chappelle special, I'm just like, I don't even remember this. This guy's a genius. Every time I watch him, I'm just like, how? I'm like, yeah, how did I was you? inspired by you because you told me you were watching all of his uh, Netflix specials again. Yeah, I went back in and watched him. The dude is like, and, and you just, it's like you forgot even his jokes on there that bomb are like the funniest jokes I've ever written. Mm. Like, it's just like they didn't even bomb. People were just like, can we laugh at that? Yeah. But I also realized Chappelle is like, because the thing is about new comics, like trying to be all like edgy or whatever, is because they watch like a Bill Burr or a Dave Chappelle and they're like, oh, these guys were saying stuff. I got to say this stuff. Yeah. But it's like Dave Chappelle also has a very educated opinion about things that he believes in. You're just saying something, trying to get a reaction out of people, which are two very different things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like uh, like he does the whole bit about being able to say nigga on TV. Yeah. And then he does. And yeah. Did you watch that one? This is Dave Chappelle. Yeah. Yeah. It's from the, one of the new Chappelle specials. Uh, I've seen all of the specials. I just have a terrible memory. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad we established that. <laughs> <laughs> memory is shit. <laughs> yeah, okay. refresh my memory, please. <laughs> on, the, on the N-word bit. There's too many N-word bits up here. I can't keep track of all of them. Yeah, no, I just, I know white people love N-word bits. Y'all, this is your thing. Yeah, I, Louis C.K. has got a couple of them, a couple bangers. Yeah, I was surprised. I didn't know Louis C.K. was dropping nigga bombs on a show like that. They're heavy. Yeah, heavy nigga bombs. I was like, ooh. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about nigga coming out of the words of white people's mouths. Like, I just, especially the only, I guess the thing is, like, if you know the person, then I guess there's, like, certain people that you know. Like, one of my boys, we've been friends since forever, and he's kind of grandfathered into it. Mm. But anytime, like, people that are, even, like, super light-skinned black people say nigga, and I'm just like, hmm, hmm. Ah, I don't like does, it. I don't like Drake it. Drake get a pass? Yeah, Drake, Drake gets a overuses pass. it. I feel. Yeah, but he's black enough. Yeah, who am I to say how many times you can say the n word? But <laughs> hey, hey, you've reached your nigga use limit today. It's like yeah. it's like swipes on Tinder. <laughs> you, <laughs> you've you've ran out. <laughs> Please drop n bombs tomorrow. <laughs> Come back <laughs> twelve hours and so you can say nigga again. God. Yeah, you try to say it, it's just like, no. <laughs> just can't, won't come out. <laughs> I've always, I've, I've really always wanted to do a service that I, that white kids pay me to say nigga. Mm. They do, but like the ass whooping insurance is sold separately. <laughs> like you can say it, but if somebody beats your ass, like I'm not held liable. <laughs> yeah. Like, like if you're, you're gonna, not going to beat them up. But you're not going to protect them either. Listen, if you look at me saying he said I could say it, I'm going to deny everything. Yeah. Unless you buy the ass whooping protection, and that's going to cost you. Because for me to stick my neck out for a white guy wantonly using the word nigga, it's going to be a lot. Yeah. Like, it's going to have to be enough that I can pay off the angry black guys too, you know? So it's going to cost you. <laughs> so... Any rich kids out there that are really fixing on being able to say nigga with impudence, let me know. I will come out there and I will, will negotiate a fee for my services. <laughs> <laughs> I've used it in conversation. I, I was drunk when I was like, when was this? this is like seven years ago. I was hanging out with slam poets. So not the toughest group of people, but I was like <laughs> referencing. <laughs> there was a group of black slam poets. And we were talking about rap music and I referenced ASAP Yams' old Tumblr page. It was the real N-word Tumblr. But I said the, the real title of the page. I was like, yeah, he used to run the real blank Tumblr page. But like I said it so quickly and confidently that people just moved on. They're like, I'm not going to like, no one called nope. me out on it. For no some one reason. called you out? No. Ooh. Yeah. One time I was hanging out with my boy that says it all the time. And he said it in conversation casually. 
yeah. then like the, this black guy that was around, he's like, whoa. He's like, I thought about saying something. He's like, but you said it so casually and confidently that I just figured it wasn't the first time you said it. So we let you slide. This was in D.C. So yeah. I was like, if black dudes in D.C. said it's cool, you're cool. But that's it's it's all in the finesse, I guess. And in- got- intention means a lot also. Right. Well, that's the thing. I think that I don't know, man. Part of me is torn. I'm torn on this intention argument. It still is jarring to hear it come out of a white person's mouth. No, it it, that, that part, like, can you just not say the one word, please? Right. So, well, that part is like, that's a thing for sure. The jarring part, but yeah. like the intention part, because I get the idea that like you, you need to have good intention. Like if your intentions are fine, then what you're saying, whatever, I get that whole intentions argument. However, mm. I am a firm believer that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. <laughs> like, I truly believe that to my core. Like, no, nobody's ever started a war like, I'm going to take over the world. That's only in fucking movies. Everyone's yeah. like, oh, look how dope we are. Let's spread our dopeness to everybody. We're going to help so many people. And that's how literally every war starts. Like, every bad thing, someone, no one's out there like, there's very few people that are out there like, <laughs> I'm going to be evil. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's not how it works. It's always somebody trying to do good or thinking that they're doing good. And then it just ends up being a clusterfuck. So because mm. of that, I'm like, intention is one thing, but I feel like it only goes so far because most things are well intentioned. I don't think there's very many people out there that are always just trying to do evil. Like, I don't yeah. think that's how evil happens, like, it's, or bad happens. It's no, not even if I'm, like, referencing a website, I don't want to ruin someone's day or, like, I don't know. It's not yeah. worth it. <laughs> there is a limit on the power of the word unless I yeah. say it, that it's very powerful, which I Very know. powerful. Like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Sometimes I say just to keep white people off balance, you know? I'll just be talking <laughs> and I'll just be like, oh, yeah, it's me and my niggas. And then just see how people react. Like, ah, oh. sometimes people get too hyped, you know. Like, uh, like uh, Jack used Jack Berg used to have this bit about how, like, pegging is a lot like babysitting your kids, and just in the sense that, like, if someone's too excited to do it, you don't want them to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it was like that. Like, if somebody gets too excited about it, I'm like, why are you getting so excited? Hmm. I don't like <laughs> it. Dang. Now we have the same nose, bro. Is your nose still fucked up from that b-ball game? Yeah, I I don't want to say it was broken, but I feel like it might have been like cracked. Yeah, you gotta get that shit set, but now they have to re-break it. Yeah, well, it's probably too late in the game now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna have to live with this crooked ass nose. Now we get the same hoodie, same nose. Yeah, <laughs> we're pretty much. Yeah. Throwing out the beards what, for No Shave November. What did you do with your nose when they broke it? Or was it just always been like that? I just got whacked on the playground and just went on living my life after that. And then I guess How the bump you developed this third grade. So I was, what are you, like eight years old? Yeah. So, you I mean, you've, so you've been kicking it just fine. You good? Yeah. <laughs> you good, dog? You breathing? It's part of my personality. I might have a deviated septum, but that's probably from drug use and not necessarily. <laughs> but that's all from the cocaine use. It's <laughs> yeah, among other things. Oh, man. I'm not a big fan of snorting things. I don't like the whole like, concept of things going in my nose. I am for the first line, and I'm like, I'm, done, I'm not. I'm done with this. Oh, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'll do it. I'm just saying I don't like it, even the first time, you know? Yeah. I'm just I'm like, ah, I don't there was like a better but also there needs to be like there can't be a better way to do cocaine you know like that makes it too good. you know what i'm saying like if there's like oh we just have this uh <laughs> we just have this cocaine beverage you know you just drink it and yeah turns out it was called four locos and they made that <laughs> illegal <laughs> i uh shooting cocaine is probably way stronger than snorting it shooting cocaine yeah you can like with a needle cocaine. yeah yeah, but you can also do crack, but but that's also inconvenient, you know? Like, if I got to find a needle every time I want to do cocaine, you can't take that to the club. Yeah. <laughs> like, you oh, can't... when you say better way, you mean a more convenient way, not like a better high. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm, yeah. I got an attic brain moving right now. <laughs> yeah, you're looking just like a more convenient way to do it. Like, I'm when... like you're trying to get high, let's get high. <laughs> Bro, I got spoons right here now. <laughs> we'll cook this. 
Nah, just like a more convenient way. Like if it's a powder form, you people take keys all the time, do key bumps or whatever. You can do that in like a in a club bathroom. You can't bring syringes or lighting cocaine on a spoon in a club <laughs> bathroom, dog. <laughs> no, you're gonna do that in the car or the alleyway. Yeah, or, or the prison. Like what? Yeah. Yeah, right? cool. yeah. In the alleyway. Just can you afford spoons if you live on the streets? Behind the club. I'm sure a spoon's not too hard to get. Yeah, now, with, with outdoor metal. dining now, you just walk right by and grab that shit. That's true. <laughs> While someone's eating. Hey, that's my <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Getting I mean, I guess if you're a patron eating outdoors. You're not gonna sweat like a metal spoon being taken from you by a crackhead. I would let it go. It's not it wasn't my spoon to begin with. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, can I just grab a new spoon? <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Look for yeah, a place crack- with a soup special. Get a nice good one. Crackheads have special powers, bro. I almost got my phone cr- stolen by a crackhead. Did I tell you about that? Recently. It was about a year or two ago, maybe in 2017. Yeah. What happened? We were in D.C., of course, you know, home of the crackheads. <laughs> That's <was laughs> so the epicenter. Yeah, so we're in D.C., and I went into a uh, a McD's, and I was using the restroom there, and I put my phone on a little thing. Walked out of the restroom, forgot my phone in the bathroom. I ran like back that in. toilet the- paper dispenser? or Yeah, yeah, sink? pretty much. Exactly that thing. Okay. Or maybe it was next to the sink. I can't remember. Anyways, I forgot my phone in there. It might have been next to the sink because I was like washing my face or something. Um, so I leave and I come back like dude's cleaning it from the works at McDonald's. And I was like, oh, did you see a phone? He's like, yeah, I gave it to this dude just a second ago. He said it was his. It's like that motherfucker. I was like, what does he look like? He's like, oh, he's over there. So he goes outside and he points me down the street to this crack to this dude walking down the street. And I get then I, I, I run down and I see that this dude is a the dude is the man of he's he's got crack on his mind you know it's it's man there. of the streets yeah he's a man of the streets and i'm sitting there like fuck because if i'm like yo give me back my phone dog and and i can tell he's thinking like do i say i don't have it do i lie but i'm like and i'm like i'm not a violent person but at the stage in the game we we got to get loose like i'm on a road right. trip in dc i can't just be out here with no phone so either we're going to do this or something's about to pop off and he looked at me for probably a solid minute i was like dog i know you got my phone it's all cool I'm not calling anybody i just need my phone back man yeah and he's, you can tell he's thinking about it <laughs> and he's like thinking about it cuz i'm just like all right and I, as the more he's like holding off i'm just like okay if How he big takes is off, this dude? He was about my size, maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah, but a little crackier. Yeah, a little. Yeah, but he's got crackhead strength. You know, you can't fight that. Yeah. <laughs> if I get hit with one of those crackhead punches, I'm out. So I gotta <laughs> be on my toes. And so I'm looking at him, man, and I'm like, all right, if he, if he takes off running, I'm gonna have to get him. But if he if he wants to fist to cuff. I got nothing to lose at this point, bro. Let's do this. Yeah, your phone's already gone. You got <laughs> yeah, my phone's gone, gone, and I'm in D.C. I have nothing, so let's do this. And then he's like, oh, man, I'm... And he just gave me the phone back. <laughs> and that was it. He just gave it back. But we had this standoff. It would have been great if the McDonald's guy had it, and you were just beating up some crackhead <laughs> around <laughs> his pockets on the street. I just ran through him, <laughs> yeah. robbing crackheads, dog. <laughs> Yeah, that like, was, was, well, I got this other phone now, so uh, <laughs> all right, we're even. This is my new phone, Doc. <laughs> I get this track phone. What the big do? Why do Why do people keep calling me for drug deals on here? <laughs> Just every text is about crack. <laughs> yeah, people hitting you up like, "Yo, you got that twenty dollars?" <laughs> I'm like, "Oh man, I wonder what." Dang, the life of a crackhead must be crazy, because you know crack fucks you up. Because the streets are always on the move. I was yeah, on the get, next thing. The next bump, the next what, how do you do crack? Can you only do it on a spoon? No, spoons are uh for cooking black tar heroin. Crack you can get, smoke like you make some like, sort of a pipe. It's usually oh, like yeah, you can tube. yeah, you can do those little glass tube pipes. I forgot that. Yeah. Or, uh, soda can. The first few times I smoked weed, we would make a pipe out of a soda can. Yeah, I think everybody did that when they first started smoking, right? That is the app. Yeah, I didn't realize that's like the one of the premier ways to smoke crack. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this whole time. 
If you smoke cocaine, is that crack? No, uh, I hate that I'm like the expert on this. <laughs> I've never well, done any of this. I just, bro, you've watched. I'm interested in drugs. Yeah, I watch documentaries. I know people. I ask questions. Uh, no, I think if I don't know, freebasing is smoking cocaine, but I don't know if there's any like special like recipe to freebasing. If there's anything you have to do to the cocaine, because mm. like, uh, you ever see New Jack City? There's a hood movie. Yeah, yeah, I see New Jack City. Yeah, when they're smoking cocaine with the blow torches, that's freebasing. But then that Pookie, how- Pookie in the stairways got like the crack pipe. I see. I wonder, man. I don't even want to know. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, is, is it, didn't Richard Pryor almost burn his like burn himself trying to freebase cocaine? Yeah, that's he what was he was free, doing. He right? was freebasing. That was pre-crack. Man, if you would have known about crack, would Richard Pryor have been Richard Pryor with crack? Oh, but he, I think he like doused himself of some sort of substance. Maybe you have to like put that on the cocaine. Like it was like ether or something like that. And he put it on himself. <laughs> Yeah, I think he got like covered in the substance and then like he was so high, I don't think he realized that he was on fire. <laughs> Man. Until he was crazy. like on fire. Yeah. And then could you if you burnt yourself doing crack, trying to do bur- try to free base coke and you hurt yourself like that, would you go on stage and talk about it that honestly? Yeah. Cause I feel I'm like I'm trying to talk about I'm trying to be honest on stage now and talk about like sex addiction and stuff and like be jokey about it, but like people people like that raw shit, that real shit. I, I've always I mean I try to be as like real as I can, but I also feel like my life has been like even the fucked up shit in my life I just l- always looked at with laughter. Like so everything yeah. doesn't feel like raw because I've never felt like it was like traumatic. I've always just been like, ah. Well, this sucks. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I've always laughed at it like that. So, so it's weird. It feels weird to me because it's not like we're laughing at my pain. It's like I was laughing at the time that it happened. So, because yeah. I make jokes about being like a starving African child, and people are like hesitant to laugh at that. Yeah, because it's raw shit. It's real shit. Yeah, <laughs> but to me, it's like, uh huh, hey, you know, like it happened. Yeah. But, so, like, and, yeah, see, that, that's when you find out, like, how like raw and real it is when you talk to other people and they're like, yo, dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, no, that's real shit. I was like, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> I'm here now. <laughs> We're good. Thumbs up. Like, that's, I guess so. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think of other things like that. Like, I, I don't know. I don't really have a lot of secrets. Like, most of my life, I just kind of, put it out there you know like i'm not like like i've done like five minutes on my dead dad and i'm being like super jokey about my dad like having a heart attack and like (laughs) people are not with it they're like this is too like i love my dad (laughs) they're just thinking about their dad (laughs) is that why you didn't do the is that why you don't do the dead dad joke uh yeah, when I'm doing like a like a goofy ten minutes, it's hard for me to be like, "Hey, my dad's dead." <laughs> when I when I first started, those were like some of the only jokes that I had. Yeah. So like I would end on that, but it would get real rough towards the end of this. I would save that for the end of the set, but it would get pretty real. Oh, that's interesting. I do like reference my dad being alive in some of the jokes, so like I'm like I have like a weird. There's no like continuity to my set, which I don't think really matters, but. No, I guess not. I mean, and it also throw people off. Like, is his dad really dead if he just said his dad was alive this whole time? Yeah, exactly. I do kind of want to. Li- I do like fucking with people like that. Like Higginbottom has a joke about his son Huckleberry, and that gets me every time. Like, yeah, but he about- also says his son is like seven feet tall. So you're like, I don't <laughs> think that's real. He's eating apples. He's eating pumpkins like apples. Yeah. Higginbottom's Tom. in like his mid twenties. Like this kid already has a seven feet tall son. I don't think so. Yeah, it's <laughs> that's true. But I just like to fucking with people because here's the thing: a lot of people aren't listening like that intently. Like they heard that he has a kid, and sometimes they'll miss that he has that this kid is ten feet tall and shoots arrows and can't read uh, yeah that's right he's 10 feet tall he's not he's not even seven feet tall yeah no he's like 10 feet tall which his is kid's like a radioactive mutant in the joke yeah he's Whereas like... i'm like yeah my dad had a heart attack <laughs> <laughs> like that could be real it's probably real yeah no i mean unless you can like make it like i, I would try to write I, i've been trying to write a bit about like about 
something like that, like about having a heart attack and my family. Because talking about death is weird. But I've always I want to write a bit about how I don't want to die in a way that gives my family like chances to to roast me after I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like if I died, like if I like was on a hike and I got eaten by a bear, it'd be like, eaten by a bear. The fuck was he doing in the woods? You know, <laughs> like they're just like confused. Yeah. And I was thinking about other things, like if I had a heart attack. Man, I'm, I always knew that dude was fake. Even his own heart didn't like him. Had enough of his bullshit. You know, <laughs> like you just yeah. can't win. Um, I've been thinking about that. Yeah, my sister would probably roast me if I like fell off of like rocks, <laughs> like it was like climbing rocks and like fell and died. Does your family is your family like ultimate roasters though? Like everybody thinks they're a roaster. Like everyone's just always just ready to kit you with the jokes. My sister will. We'll we'll like roast each other a little bit. Okay. My mom's like not like too jokey. She's got a good sense of humor, but like she doesn't come with the jokes. No, nah, my mom's all my mom's ready with the roast, bro. At any yeah. given time, my mom's ready to, with the roast. You think you you think you're some hot shit? My mom's ready to roast you at like all times. My dad <laughs> does not understand jokes. Like yeah. <laughs> he, he like my dad's joke for like form of a joke is like Dilbert, you know, like the comics Dilbert in the newspaper. Yeah. Like uh, yeah, it's not even anything. Like that's the kind of stuff my dad finds hilarious. Like it's always like stuff about like computer science or some shit like that and it'll be like he calls he called dos linux (laughs) (laughs) all the normal people like the fuck are you talking about my dad's like oh this guy writes jokes (laughs) my dad's just he's an uber nerd like that does your dad fuck with family circus um i don't think so i hate family circus no he doesn't fuck with that he only fucks with um dilbert do you know what's crazy though that my dad fucks with that i found out and i didn't even know so my dad like growing up like we didn't watch any television got in trouble for my first the first time i got spanked by my dad was for watching the simpsons like that's the kind of household i grew up in Mm -hmm. but then recently my dad came over to my my sister's house to hang out the nieces and my nephew was watching avatar the last airbender you know what that is right and yeah. my dad was just enthralled. And he went back and watched, like, the whole series. <laughs> I'm still shook. I can't, like, my dad doesn't do anything like that. Like, he's a petroleum engineer. Like, he's a, he's an oil and gas analyst, like a yeah. petroleum engineer by trade. He's, like, a very serious guy when it comes to, like, all that stuff. So to watch, have him watch. He's a watch, gas engineer. He's kind of, like, bending the elements a little bit, isn't he? He's Yeah, he's a, he's out there. He's just, he's a gas bender, I guess what you call it. He's, nah, like, he's moving the earth to like get to that gas? No, nah, he doesn't do any of that. He's a, he's an, he's an analyst. Okay. So he just like, he, he just comes up with like the profitability of oil fields, essentially. Like this oil field mm-hmm. is going to push out this many barrels oils at this rate. These factors might affect it. It's a good purchase if you're trying to do this and blah, 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 kind of stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. He's, he's bending numbers. Yeah, well, and words, just a super nerd. Like, that's what he is. But yeah, now just, you and your dad can nerd out on anime together. Yeah, my mind was blown. I was like, my dad nerds out on anime? The only show he's ever watched that he's ever, ever, I've ever heard of my dad, like, sitting down and watching. Like, he loved it. And I'm shocked. I'm still shook, bro. I'm still shook right now. <laughs> Do you watch show- Avatar? I love that show. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. Nice. But- you guys, yeah, you guys should watch it together. Just hey pops, you want you wanna watch some Avatar? <laughs> yeah. He's like, I've already seen every season. <laughs> but yeah, it's crazy because that show in general is probably like they said it was like one of the most popular shows of app on Netflix of all time. Hmm. Like, even though it came out in 07, Netflix put it back on there, and within like a week it was the most popular show on Netflix for like six weeks in a row or something stupid like that. Yeah, I never watched it, I never messed with anime like that. Yeah, I don't know. If you're gonna watch any anime, that's the one to watch. It's just so good and wholesome. And it was Nickelodeon too, wasn't it? Yeah, it's it probably one of. Like yeah, it's not even like actual Japanese anime. It's like real. It's like a bootleg American version of anime. Yeah, but it's so good though. It's, you can't. I will. I will die on the hill that that TV show stands up to like almost any TV show ever written. Is there a live action movie? I don't talk about that. <laughs> The live that action movie. That is my next question. No, nah, the live action movie is not it. That was M. Night Shyamalan Lemonhan. Oh, okay. And, 
Yeah, M. Night Shyamalan. Ha, ha, ha. Did he have a twist at the end? The twist was, uh, it's not it, any good. <laughs> it was so bad. It was just the worst. Because the thing about the show is you can't do that in like a bootleg way to make it live action. Like there's, it's a three, essentially like, it's probably three seasons of like 20 plus episodes that you try to make into like a trilogy. Yeah. And it just doesn't. Oh, he did three movies? No, he was trying to, but wow. after the first one, they're just like, nah, dude. Cut <laughs> yeah, they cut off. And as they should have. The whole, the, whatever he was trying to do was not the move. Mm-hmm. And because he, I don't want to talk about it. He just, no, <laughs> don't, I don't even count that. That's not, that's not even the same thing. It's not, it's not real. The live action doesn't exist to me. I block it out mentally. That's how I feel very strongly about it. Is there any other live action anime movies? They try, but I don't like live action anime movies. Mm. I think the reason I like animated stuff is because it's it's like it's a it's it's a step outside of the real world. Like yeah, I can't true, watch like true fantasy. Yeah, I don't want to watch like The Office or Parks and Rec on my free time. It's like I have to deal with bullshit people at work. This isn't a TV show. This isn't fun for me. This is yeah. life. Like I get it. But at the same time, this isn't funny. Like, I know this kind of bullshit. It's not. So if I'm going to watch something that, like, I have to escape reality for, why not be, like, a suspended belief, like an animation that makes you suspend your belief, you know, your disbelief, you know? Right. So I can't. I don't watch live action things. It's also why I have a problem with documentaries. That's why I love documentaries. Like, my life was so boring. I would just watch, like, documentaries of people that do exciting things or crazy stories. I don't, I can't fuck with documentaries like that. Cause I'm like, if I'm just going to watch a documentary about something crazy, why don't I just go do something crazy? Yeah. Well, once I started doing stand up and like found some other hobbies, I stopped watching mostly Netflix altogether. But yeah, I haven't watched any documentaries really in the last few years. Yeah. I mean, so I, I watched one on a uh, class action park about the makeshift amusement park in New Jersey. That was good. That makes me just want to go to a, Apparently, some friends went to North Carolina, and there was a um, an open water park in North Carolina over the summer mm-hmm. because fuck COVID in the South. And I strongly considered going into it because, or just going down to it. Like, how fun would that have been? Yeah, there were no like social distancing uh, guidelines. It's North Carolina, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I had they were in the news at all. It was all about Florida. Yeah, that's because no one gives a fuck in the South. And Florida's the craziest yeah. fucking place. North Carolina is kind of under the radar in the South. Yeah, no one, that's because Michael Jordan was like, all right, these people are cool. <laughs> like, what, what else? Heels? Yeah, what else do you know about North Carolina besides Michael Jordan? Like, what else does North Carolina have? The Wright brothers? Uh, I didn't even know that. Is that a thing? <laughs> I don't know anything. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, the Wright brothers, I believe, were in North Carolina. I, they're one of the barbecue capitals. It's uh, North Carolina, Texas, and St. Louis, Missouri. Mm, I don't know. I asked St. Louis, Kansas City. They don't... No. Oh, why did I say St. Louis? I meant Kansas City. Well, it's Kansas, yeah, Kansas City is on the border of Missouri and Kansas, so it's yeah. in both places. But yeah, Kansas City. Yeah, I think it's Kansas City because I went through that and they take their their barbecue very seriously. Mm-hmm. Like they're like, hey, like we'll kill you if you don't like our barbecue. And I was like, why is this so serious? Like, <laughs> <laughs> go to like, that oh. Gates. What's up, Gates Barbecue? I didn't go there. I only know about because Tech Nine has a song about it. Everything okay. I know about Kansas City, Tech Nine has a song about it. Well, that's because Kansas City is also like one of those places. Like, what the fuck you're gonna be doing in Kansas City? Yeah. Like, who? The one thing I will say though is, if you ever do go to Missouri, the they used to be I don't know how it is now, but they used to have the library, and it's like an adult playground for the library in St. Louis. Mm, it's like one of the. It's like a. It's like free to get into. They have like bars. It's huge. They have all these things. It's like this, like a not library, a museum. Oh, they turn okay. the museum there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like turn it up at the library. <laughs> turn up, turn up, turn up in these books. Nigga, reading, reading, reading. Ah, ah. <laughs> 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 just... 
<laughs> just drunk yeah, reading silently it's like silent <laughs> library yeah it's like a silent disco but for libraries you know oh that, that's a good idea what everyone's just listening to books on tape <laughs> yeah <laughs> getting lit free base and cocaine <laughs> well i feel like everyone should free base at least once yeah, free your mind while you free base how how long before you're dating a girl or do you know a girl did you used to tell her that you did drugs or smoked weed uh, i feel like that comes up pretty quickly i'm pretty open okay. about that nice to meet you i'm jesse i get high yeah <laughs> well i guess when you smoke weed you have an alien like... flip <laughs> you have a hippie flip mm. yeah yeah no I'm... we need to invent a new flip what would that flip be uh freebasing cocaine on acid the 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 Wall Street flip. <laughs> what about if we the, y- the yuppie flip? The yuppie flip. What about yeah. if we <laughs> if we hit if you hit DMT well on acid? Oh yeah, there, there's a new flip. <laughs> yeah, then we call that. The Space That's probably Force. on heroin somewhere. What's up? That's that website heroin where everyone like recounts their drug experiences. Yeah, well, I mean, you'll have an experience to recount if you do that. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much, that's like the Dune flip or something. You're on like Deep Space Nine with that. I've Maybe. like tried to explain my DMT experience to, to people so many times and it just never makes any more sense. Nah, that's because you can't, it's like one of those things you can't explain to people unless they've done it. And yeah. then if they've done it, you don't need to explain it. They just know. It's like you're trying to explain a dream to somebody. And it's like, you had to be in my brain. And like, I don't really <laughs> remember half of it. So Speaking of, I think, yeah, I think I want to try it sometime. Yeah. I do have, I may or may not have the, <laughs> I may or may not have the utensils necessary to do that. I may or may not have access to the galaxy. Yeah. What's that? Um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen that movie? No. Why did I even ask? Why do I ask if you've seen anything? Gosh. Do you want to hang out and watch movies sometimes? We could do that. We have a Lonely yeah. Man's movie night. We'll watch Lonely Shawshank Man's movie. Number one. Shawshank's there. Uh, we'll have to Boys, watch. Boys like, in the Sc- Hood. So have you seen Scarface? I've seen Scarface a couple times. Okay, good. You know, you're out there. But what about the pod? I mean, the Godfather. Never seen the Godfather. Neither have I, so we're on the same page there. All right, good. That's finally, a classic movie you haven't seen. I like to watch Italian gangster mob movies. I don't know, like gangster movies. I don't know why. They're just like good movies. I've seen like, Goodfellas like 20 times. Goodfellas. I love Goodfellas. Yeah. Have you ever seen like a Bronx Tale? Haven't seen that. Mm. Saw Casino you, once. Casino's a good one. Have you seen Carlito's Way? I've seen Carlito's Way a couple times nice benny uh, blanco from the bronx benny blanco i've ever seen life with eddie murphy and martin lawrence no you've asked me about that movie a few times that's on the list that's on the list but, bro we gotta watch that movie when i was a kid when i was in like eighth grade before school every day my best friend would come to the house and we would just watch life we just put it on until we had to leave for school <laughs> and I, I i used to love that movie quite as like word for word it's so fucking funny and no one ever talks about it. One of Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence's most underrated movies. It was like in the mid nineties, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like mid late. They were both on like the downswing at the time. Every, everyone's in it, bro. Like, well, anyone black is in it. I should say that because if I started saying names, people would be like, "Who?" <laughs> like, but Bernie Mac's in it. Love Bernie Mac. Mm. R.I.P. Yeah, and he wasn't famous yet. Bernie Mac should have been. He's one of the most underrated people. Like, for somebody, Bernie Mac is just so fucking funny. Yeah, he blew up a little bit after Original Kings of Comedy. He got his own sitcom. Yeah, he did. And he, he was doing that thing where you talk to the camera before, like, The Office was doing that. He'd be mm-hmm. saying, America, let me tell you something about these keys. <laughs> like, he was horrible Bernie Mac impression. That's an impression <laughs> I want to look at. I wasn't the worst. It wasn't the worst? All right, yeah. I'm going to work on my Bernie Mac, and one of these days I'm going to... Come in, America. Let me tell you something about me, these kids. Just, that's gonna be my. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I love Bernie Mac, man. Mm. He was just such a. 
he's a character like some people like play characters and try to be characters you know but like bernie mac himself was i don't know bernie mac but like anytime you saw him even at whatever or anyone talks about him that's just how he was like that person that he was like let me tell you something about these kids like that's who he was like it's a trip yeah oh man gone too soon i ain't scared of you motherfuckers that that bit right there the i ain't scared of you that's one of the first like comedy stand-up special like the comedy like videos i ever watched was all Mm. the early def jam stuff yeah and the first tape i ever watched had him on there rocking those things like let me tell you something I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. I guess that was like his second Def Jam set also. I thought it was his, his debut. Oh, man. Bro, I've been... I, I try to do a bit about that. Like, ah, oh, I don't give a fuck. But you can't. It's just you can't start off like that. Like, you just... It's only like something that Bernie Mac could do. Like... Oh, it was in that moment, too. Like, I don't he, I don't know if he ever did that anywhere else. No. I think... Well, because I read... I heard the... I read the story about it. Apparently... Everyone else that night had been bombing, mm. right? So everyone else had gone there. The dude before him has just bombed like righteously. And like everyone was like, oh man, it's going to be like tough out there. Like I don't want to go face these people. And so Bernie Mag just went out there and just looked at him like, I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. <laughs> like yeah. just straight up called him out like that. Like it was a very spot on thing, like spot of the moment thing to do. Like he wasn't planning on it. Right. And it just hit, like it just murdered because he killed. I think he and uh, Kid Capri had like the kick it thing worked out. They might have done that like together before. Yeah, the, the kick it part, I think he did that part, but the I ain't scared of you motherfuckers was just, like just straight yeah. off the top. Yeah. <laughs> kick it, kick it. <laughs> That's so dope to have a DJ just at the ready. When you're like, kick it, he just like drops a beat for you. <laughs> Man, have you ever done a show with a, with a DJ like <laughs> yeah. walking you out? Have you ever done one? Yeah. I did a, uh, uh, Latasha, Latasha's show. Oh yeah, at, uh, yeah. Nomesco. Did you ever do that gig? I did do that gig. Yeah, and they ask you like, what do you want the DJ to play for you? I'm trying to think of what I came out to. The show started like two hours late because the DJ wasn't there. She's like, we can't start the comedy show until the DJ is here. I'm like, why do we? <laughs> can't we just go tell our jokes? But like. That's so, just the a- aesthetic, dog. It's her aesthetic. <laughs> yeah, it's DJ. her aesthetic. <laughs> I respect. I respect anyone's aesthetic. You got to keep the aesthetic. Who's paying for the DJ? <laughs> <laughs> that's my. So that's they're my... like, when earlier in the night she asked me, she's like, "What song do you want to play uh, when you go up?" And like, I think I had a song in mind, but when she asked me at the time the club was playing uh flex by mad cobra do you know that song nah it's an old dance hall song so flex uh time to have sex uh so you decided to come out to that i was like play, can you just play this please i was like can you play mad cobra flex and she was like oh man i haven't heard this song in forever i was like this is a classic but it has like a really like like long like whimsical intro so i had to like walk up real slow before uh he was like flex uh time to have sex and like the beat like it kicks in and then you start swagging out there walked up like super (laughs) slow like dancing to it you better learn if you're gonna walk out super slow to that i was like oh man i've never done a show with a dj before i was like you got the air horn and he was like i was like hell yeah i was like whenever i point up Hit that air horn for me. So every time I bombed a joke, I would just point up at the sky and just get the air horn. And it would reset, it would reset the audience. And I would just go into my next bit. It was so fucking good. And uh, I think I made him drop the beat again a couple times. I'm like, <laughs> Anytime a joke doesn't work, drop the beat, DJ. <laughs> just I was, like, I was like, drop that shit one more time. And just like, walked around. oh man i forgot what i came out to i'm trying to think i always like to come out to silly songs so it was probably something like africa by toto or some shit like that that yeah. is something that i would do dun, 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 dun. that's some good walkout music you know yeah i i 
first of all, that song used to be on my playlist just in regular, so. Yeah, we heard that at a few uh, trips to open mics in your car. Yeah, back in the back in the day when open mics were a consistent thing. We spent a lot of time in car rides together. We still do. Did a gig yeah. last night. <laughs> we did. Went to an open mic on uh, Thursday and Friday <laughs> last week. Did that mean we did? That show was yesterday, so we did three shows, three sets in four days? Yeah, that's a COVID Don't call record, it a comeback, baby. baby. <laughs> Don't call it a comeback. It's and like we're on that we're show working together towards next... something. Yeah, it's like we, we're working on that show on Saturday together, right? Two shows now. Are you on that Friday show too? No, uh, Saturday, Christine Hurley at Patriot Place or CBS Comedy Scene or whatever. Uh, yeah. There's a 7 o'clock show and now there's a 4.30 show. Really? Yeah. I don't know if I'm on the 4.30 show. Because nobody uh, told me about the 4.30 show. I mean, just ride out with me to the 4.30 show. We'll get you on that 4.30 show. Yeah, bro, I'm going to ride out I'm gonna ride out regardless. Like, I'm, I already said I was going to be there beforehand. So the, the best way to ensure that you get a spot on a show is just show up. Yeah. Uh, there's almost 60 tickets sold for the 7. So I guess they're like, fuck it. Let's uh, push a 4.30. So far... Zero tickets sold. So we'll see if this 4.30 actually happens on Saturday. <laughs> uh, but there's 60 tickets sold for this, the 7? Yeah. Nice. Let me get up on there real quick and do my thing. I'm about to be out there and fuck it. That's my new motto before any show. Forget the audience size. Forget the crowd. Just fuck it. Go have some fun. Yeah, last night uh, we performed to four people. And the host girlfriend, so five people. Yeah, outside, outside with no microphone. Uh, under the restaurant was like on the water in Charlestown, and then they had like a cool like fountain area that like I guess they usually do shows at. But because it was raining last night, we ducked under like a walkway. I don't know what that was. It's like some sort of like bridge structure above us next to the entrance of the restaurant. Yeah. So we were able to squeeze four people and us under there with uh, no microphone. Just did it slam poetry style. And uh, which was kind of fun, like talking with both hands. I felt like I was on like a Tonight Show or something. <laughs> hey, this guy. Yeah. <laughs> did you feel Italian? <laughs> yeah, like I had like a like a like a lavalier microphone on. I was just like I could. I was able to use both hands, <laughs> but also I was very cold, so I was like putting both hands like in my pockets. And yeah. like usually when you get the microphone, you might like cross your arms. But I had like both hands in my pockets, and I was like, oh wait, I need to be like expressive in this joke. Take them out. <laughs> you cross your hands with the. You cross your hands with the microphone on it. I try not to. Yeah, I feel like crossing, when I'm with a... crossing your arms on stage is like you're like guarding yourself against the uh, you're like you're like standoffish. Well, sometimes you need to because you need to guard yourself against those crazy fuckers out there. They're yeah. wild, then. But I I think the <laughs> I one like thing to about open the open up to the crowd, I like to the embrace one... my audience. Do you <laughs> do you ever put your hands like wide open, like like the Jesus hands? Like I welcome you, people. One one hand, I gotta have the other hand on the microphone. I, the one part about the microphone that I hate is the cord. I'm just, one of my biggest fears, not the biggest fears, is just, I don't want to trip over a mic cord in the middle of a show. Like, you're going to have cord eat. awareness. <laughs> yeah, in basketball, that's what yeah. we called it. You're going you know? to whip that shit like Chris Rock. Bro, I'd be doing it all the time, but then I always feel like I'm paying it's too much attention to it. But I'd rather, one time though, I did almost eat it on stage over the microphone cord. <laughs> not ideal. It is not ideal. Where was that at? I mean, it's happened a bit, but the worst one was probably a Patriot place when I just almost ate it real bad. Oh yeah, I have footage of that actually. Yeah, you, you have that on camera. Just me. I'll put that on just... the on the Lonely Man's podcast page. That'll be some some or the Patreon. If we ever start a Patreon. That's on when the, the that's fans. the only fans. That's where we hide the real quality content. Me just about to eat shit. <laughs> and if you pay an extra five dollars, you can even see me bomb and eat my dick in that set. <laughs> If I can put that up for like an extra like a hundred bucks, I'll do that. Oh my god! OnlyFans is probably deactivated at this point. I haven't think... logged into it in months. Are OnlyFans haters like that? They just block you off if you're not logging in. Yeah, like I happened to go on my personal page and it was like, if you don't log in in the next week, we're just gonna delete your shit. 
So man, they don't even play. That's why they make sure that your content. Yeah, provider. they gotta they gotta clear that uh, server space. Yeah, man. I noticed that some some folks that we know are getting OnlyFans. How do you feel about this? Are you supporting? I'm it? a subscriber. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fully support it. I dig it. Have you heard any word that like did you? I don't know. I guess no one says like, oh, you're su- you're supporting my shit. No, I haven't got any DMs like, hey, uh, I hope you like my nipples or like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, somebody? <laughs> Can can you DM if you if you have a whole OnlyFans if you're a subscriber can you DM people? Yeah, and they can charge you per message. Oh, yeah. So per I message. think there's a limit on that now, but like before, I think you could just charge like hundreds of dollars per message, so you could do some financial domination on these simps. Damn, Bella Thorne fucked up the game for everybody. She really did. She fucked yeah, it up for a lot of people. She, she fucked up the money, which that's a hater play. Because you're Bella Thorne, you already got bread. Why are you fucking up people's other breads? Like, I think she claims she's doing a documentary or some sort of like story about like sex work. So she like, bro, she kept that money and she made more. Yeah. Nah, I ain't fooling. I ain't buying none of that. Bella Did Thorne. She deactivate does... the OnlyFans page. No, nah, she still got. It. She even changed whatever. I think she still has it, and she even changed her price now, and she made even more money. Are you gonna look it up? Yeah, I'm looking it up right now. I'm young Jamie. Look it up. <laughs> Pull that shit up. Yeah. Let me see if it's still there. No, nah, she's definitely she's definitely got an OnlyFans, bro. Uh, does it say how many followers she has at the top? Um, 252,000. 0.7 thousand. Is that hearts or is that like followers? I guess that's hearts. Um, yeah. How do you check followers? You can choose to show it or not, so she doesn't show it. I mean, I like, when, she, I like when people are transparent. Yeah, I think she's. You can subscribe for twenty dollars per month now. Yeah. Um, and she has one hundred thirty. She has one hundred thirty-three photos, thirty-one videos, following bundles, twenty percent off, forty-eight dollars for three months. I mean, she's got a lot of content. It might be worth it. No, because none of it is nudes. No. Yeah. All of it apparently is just her, but she's Does it say that explicitly? Like there's no nudes. I don't think, yeah. Um, I don't think no. that she's if you I don't Google think Bella Thorne nude, you'll find a bunch of pictures anyway. Her titties are out there. Yeah, hasn't she been nude in movies? I don't know, maybe not movies, but like out in public. She's showing it off. And like certain outfits, so they're like see-through outfits and stuff. So I don't know. Here's we'll the, see what she's working with. She puts it out there. I, I I then just realized like I don't I don't know any Bella Thorne movies. No one does. I think she was like a Disney or Nickelodeon star, and then uh, when she turned eighteen, she just started like posting her body all over Instagram. Blew up. Man, that's all it takes, huh? I mean, it hasn't worked for me yet. No, she's apparently done a shit ton of movies. I did watch one of her movies on Netflix. It was like a cheesy thriller movie. It wasn't too bad. I was uh, smoking weed at the time, so. Yeah, no. She's, fair enough. I didn't know she was out here being prolific. Had three movies in 2020, and I didn't hear of a single one. Yeah. So maybe that's why she's moving to OnlyFans, huh? <laughs> she, she's like a B movie actress. I don't think she's any in any like blockbusters. She's not like Megan Fox, but maybe someday. She's a bootleg Megan Fox, is what you're saying. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> I'm, I'm Look thought. up Bella Thorne after the podcast, bro. I'm sorry. I'm just intrigued about this Bella Thorny. You're so you're like typing in your credit card information right now. Oh, bro, I already subscribed to six months of Bella Thorne OnlyFans, baby. Get that bundle. <laughs> Got that bundle, jerked it twice. <laughs> Gosh, well, I'm just I can't support Bella Thorne now. It's too late. Yeah. No, nah, fuck the game up. Support yeah. uh our local our local uh OnlyFans content creators, friends of the show. Yeah, you know, I like my product. I like my produce locally sourced. <laughs> yeah, 
you know, support my onlyfans.com slash Jesse Burling game. I, I, I'm not transparent with the, my follower count because it's currently at zero. <laughs> I'll be transparent on here. Yeah, no, man. What's, what's lower your only fans number or our listens? <laughs> We have more. We have more of fans of Lonely Man's than I do of my Only Fans page, as we should. And some of these fans still, get this. Still don't know who our them. fans are. If you've made it to the end of the show, you're a true fan of this show. Reach out to us DMs. for real. We 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 want to know who you are. We want to know about yeah. you. So get at us, and who knows? We might even drop a know. comment. Uh, drop a review on Apple Podcasts, which we just found out was a thing the other day. Yeah. We're on Apple uh, Podcasts, you know. I'm about to put it on my Tinder that we're on we're on Apple Podcasts too. If you were the person that gave us one star on Apple Podcasts, <laughs> let me know. That's hilarious. <laughs> a little bit. What a hater, though. <laughs> I want to know why. Uh, and if you leave a review like my roommate did, I'll read it on the podcast, like this. Uh, the chemistry between Worcester Mass comedians. Ben Bo and Jesse Burlingame is both electric and endearing, and their podcast is an entertaining look into both the comedy world and modern life. Their freewheeling approach to podcasting makes you feel as if you're part of the conversation, and it never fails to keep me hooked the entire time. If you're looking for some levity in your life, you found it on Lonely Man's. What a fucking review, dude. That is, that is, bro, that's seven stars. Tell your roommate he should start fucking doing writing press releases and shit. <laughs> He's, he's our PR team. Yeah, well, and it's 100% true. I agree with all of that. Yeah. What he said, word for word. Um, That's our new yeah. podcast bio. I'm just going to put that <laughs> yeah. on, our, on our podcast can, page. Can, can you actually, like, can we put that on our about section? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think we should use that. that. I got to be careful with how I rock this hood, though. It's a, <laughs> a little... It's a little That's why I didn't get the white one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess in pink you can do that, but yeah. if I do get the white ones, I'll be out here looking like I'm playing for the wrong team, confusing people. <laughs> Just cut some holes in the hood. Yeah, you can cut the thumb holes, but not eye holes. Yeah. Oh, thumb holes. Dude, don't they make hoodies with thumb holes in them? Yeah, I was uh I used to do it myself with pens back in eighth grade or ninth grade. Nah, you got to pay somebody $78 to do it for you. Yeah, now you can get them, like, hemmed up around the hole so they don't rip anymore. But Yeah, that's nice. Um, I don't know, anything we want to wrap up on? Promote? We're in Foxborough uh, this Saturday. Yeah, comedy scene. Come check it out. I'm in R- Rhode Island on Friday. Yeah, what show is that? That's a great question. I still don't have the details yet. <laughs> I'll tag along to that with you. All right, come through, bro. It's always a good time. You know, I love to have you whenever we go. Uh, we can wear matching hoodies to the show. Yeah, I'm going to be rocking the Lonely Man's hoodie, please believe. Oh, man. I got to host the show Saturday in the hoodie, right? Of course. Bro, if you host the show in the hoodie, I will do my set in the hoodie on Saturday. <laughs> in fact, I will probably, if you see me out in public and I'm not rocking Lonely Man's gear, let me know. I'll go get it. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be in it. Yeah. If we're not rocking it, you should be. Teespring.com slash Lonely Mans. Get Link you some. In the description. Uh, Best Christmas gifts coming up. Thank y'all for listening. Uh, see you next time. Peace.